Well, welcome to uh, Apple Door. It's good to uh, meet with you this morning and to uh, our lifeboat station here. Um, the young lady sitting at the desk there, Sam, uh, she'll be very embarrassed about this, is our only female crew member that goes out on, on all three of our lifeboats here. Uh, Sam is married to Nick and they have a, a young lad, Jack. He's about four now, is he? Yeah. Four, four of them. <laughs> and uh, they actually squabble about who's going to see when there's a shower. I win. Anyway, it's, it's lovely to have you here. My name's Andrew. I'm one of uh, seven what we call deputy launching authorities uh, within the station here. And uh, my role, uh, uh, as, as well as being chaplain to, uh, to our crew, um, my role, or the, the launching authority's role here, is when uh, the pages go off, when there's a problem, uh, it comes to uh, whoever is on duty first. Uh, we then contact the Coast Guard, which is based at Swansea, the other side of the, the Bristol Channel in Wales, and uh, find out what the problem is, uh, liaise with the coxswain, uh, of the lifeboat to decide which boat is going out uh, and to give them as much information as we can before the launch. Once the boat is launched, the coxswain is in complete and absolute charge of everything that goes on. We just have a supporting role here, uh, filling in paperwork and keeping in touch with, with the boat and the Coast Guard. Uh, the r and is, is unique. Um, it was formed in 1824 and uh, it now has its headquarters down in Poole in Dorset. We have uh, two, approximately 280 lifeboat stations around the coast of Great Britain, uh, including Ireland, and uh, most of them uh, operate either uh, an all-weather lifeboat, like we've got out here, or some of the smaller stations, just an inshore boat. As I say, 280 uh, lifeboat stations around the country. There are approximately four and a half thousand volunteer crew members. That's the folks that actually go to sea in the lifeboats. There are another three and a half thousand volunteers like me that are a shore crew, help to launch the lifeboat, do administrative work. And there are around about uh, 1,500 paid members of staff that, that the r and employ, mainly down in Poole, uh, where the headquarters are. But, um, uh, like uh, our coxswain and our uh, mechanic here uh, are both full-time paid staff. Very unusual. In fact, uh, Appledore is quite unique. We are one of the few stations that actually has three lifeboats, um, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But we have a full-time paid coxswain and a full-time paid mechanic. Most stations only have uh, a mechanic that's, that's paid. Um, let's say the history of the Iron Lake goes right back to 1824. And uh, has saved, um, I, oh, it's, it's well over 150,000 lives in those years. Um, of course, being an island, uh, we, we've got, um, I think it's about 6,500 miles of coastline uh, around this little country of ours. And uh, being a, a maritime nation as well, we've, we've had uh, thousands upon thousands of shipwrecks and probably tens of thousands of lives lost. Uh, over uh, the centuries. Uh, Appledore itself is, is, um, is quite unique. It looks, if you look out uh, over the estuary, you can see a line of white breaking water out there. Um, that is uh, known, well, it is the bar, uh, Appledore Bar, and uh, it is an incredibly dangerous piece of water. We've got two rivers. Uh, we've got the uh, River Tor and the River Torridge that flow into this estuary. They meet just here. We've got very strong tides at spring tides, which are, are the peak tides, the big uh, range and fall of tide. Uh, we've got uh, um, currents running here between five and six knots, which is, is, is very fast. And uh, the water is very shallow. You can already see um, areas of rock and sand being exposed as the tide goes out. And uh, indeed, it's not safe to uh, cross uh, the bar except for two hours before and two hours after high water. Any time after that can be exceedingly dangerous. 
and uh, we have uh, our local church in the village, uh, one of the local churches, um, a graveyard. If you walk through the graveyard, you will see dozens and dozens of headstones that say, lost on the bar, drowned at sea. Uh, Appledore grew up as a, um, a little fishing port, but in, uh, in the uh, sort of 1700s, 1600s, 1700s, uh, it became a shipbuilding centre, and uh, when the timber in uh, Devon and Somerset was exhausted, uh, they used to go to Newfoundland in, uh, in North America uh, and import timber from there, and then bring the timber back, build the ships, and send them off. And uh, Appledore traded with countries all over the, over the world, Australia, South America, uh, the far uh, West Indies, and so on and so forth. And you can imagine the tragedy of coming all the way from Australia, say, to getting within a mile of home, and then being wrecked on that piece of sand out there, which hundreds and hundreds of ships were lost on. Okay. Um, the first lifeboat came to Appledore in 1825, uh, before the time of, uh, uh, of engines. Um, it was a, a, a rowing boat, and we've got some pictures on the walls so as you go down the stairs. Uh, that depict some of the early boats here. Uh, the first boat, I, I believe, was called the Association, and she was here from uh, 1825 uh, uh, to about 1870, and she, she's reputed to have saved over 100 lives in that time. She was a, a pulling boat, um, rowed, uh, had eight oars, and uh, was launched um, from very close to here, just a, a, about a half a mile further that way. Uh, between 1831 and uh, the early 1900s, we actually had three lifeboat stations here. Uh, one further down there, one over on the Broads and Burrows, on the Sand Burrows over there, and one over on, uh, um, sorry, Broads and Burrows, and one on the Northern Burrows. So depending on where the, uh, the, the, the ship in trouble was, would depend on which lifeboat would go out to her. We also had the privilege in, I think it was 1922, of having the first motorised lifeboat here in Appledore, and uh, the first one in the Bristol Channel, um, and uh, she put in sterling service. And when you think of the first boat that we had, uh, was powered by a single 45 horsepower petrol engine, uh, you compare that to Molly, which is out on, uh, she's out on the moorings, she has uh, two 1,250 horsepower diesel engine, so uh, a, a huge difference in power. Um, she's capable of, of 25 knots in, uh, in most conditions, and has a range of, of uh, well, she, um, uh, she carries about 4,000 litres of diesel, so she's got a, a, a massive endurance out at sea. She can stay there for a long time. She normally has a, a crew of between five and seven, a minimum of five people, uh, maximum of seven. But in case of emergency, uh, she could take an awful lot of people on board in some rather cramped conditions, but better that safe than uh, being uh, on, on a wreck. Our um, boat downstairs, the B-class, uh, she's capable of about 33 knots, uh, very fast, um, but she's really, uh, she has limitations weather-wise. This, this Molly will go out in anything, absolutely anything. And Sam will attest to that, won't you? Um, but uh, the B-class is, 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 does have restrictions uh, on her uh, ability to go out. She's primarily inshore. She does go over the bar. Uh, but if she goes over the bar and it's, um, it's a bit rough, the big one goes with her as well. But she can get closer inshore than the, the big one, obviously. So that's a little bit about our station here. Uh, we actually have 33 crew, uh, crew members within uh, the, the lifeboat, uh, lifeboat station, all volunteers, bar the coxswain and mechanic, and uh, all willing to uh, risk their lives to go and help and save other people uh, as and when they're needed to. Uh, it's, Appledore is perhaps, I think it's the busiest station in the Bristol Channel. Normally, we average about uh, 100 uh, emergencies a year. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit less than that, sometimes it's a little bit more, but it averages out about that. And our nearest uh, other lifeboat stations are either at Ilfracombe, which is about 24, 25 miles uh, eastwards, or Padstow down in Cornwall, which is about 40 miles 
westwards, okay? And there are obviously lifeboat stations over on the, uh, the coast. There's Clavelli, though, no, isn't there? Clavelli is Clavelli. an inshore boat. That's inshore, yeah, not, right. Not, not all weather. Not, not yeah, yeah. I should have clarified that. Yeah. So, um, there we are. Uh, it, it costs, believe it or not, um, £385,000 per day to operate the RMLI. And uh, I think, um, if my maths are right, um, it's about £140 million pounds a year. And you can work that out yourself. You're probably clever at the moment uh, at your maths. But cheers, yeah, Sam. Thank uh -huh. you. Um, but it, it, and, and every penny comes in from voluntary contribution. Uh, we are not funded by the government or any na uh, national organisation. It is all funded by the general public uh, through selling of souvenirs, through um, what we call flag days, where people go out and you know, have little lifeboat boxes and, and raise money that way. Um, so, it, you know, it, it, it is quite an organisation. And uh, I'm delighted that we don't have uh, any government interference. Um, we are set guidelines. Um, the boats are, are vastly improved on what they used to be. Uh, say Molly can do 25 knots, whereas the earlier lifeboats up until about the 1980s were limited to about 7 or 8 knots. Um, you know, that, that's as fast as they could go. Uh, Molly, um, she's a Tamar class, and uh, to buy her new, uh, she would cost you a cool £2.7 million. Pounds. Uh, a lot of money, isn't it, for one person? Yeah. And uh, they're launching four or five of those every year. Um, so it's, uh, again, a huge sum of money. Uh, there is a, a newer lifeboat than uh, the Tamar class. That's called the Shannon class. They're all named after rivers in Great Britain. And uh, she is a, a slightly smaller boat designed to be launched on a carriage into the water, either down a beach or, or slip boat. Um, but... Uh, with, with the carriage and tractor and the boat, um, it, it's about two and a half million pounds, so it's, it's not much cheaper. Um, yeah, that's, that uh, I think is, is a very basic overview. Um, I'd be very interested if you've got any questions that you want to ask. Uh, I, I will do my best to answer them for you. If you haven't got any for me, I'll, I've got one for you in a minute. <laughs> you just said that they cost a lot of the boat. Do you get the new one? New. Yes. yes yeah. Um, the, uh, the up until recently, they've been built at a number of, of, of shipyards around the country. Uh, uh, Plymouth was was one of them that, that actually built uh, this one. Uh, but the R and I are now going into building their own. They've got to set up a factory in Poole in Dorset, opposite the, uh, the Lifeboat College, uh, and they're just literally gearing up to build the new boats themselves in the future. Yeah. Is it easy to recruit people to um, an organisation? Mm, good question. Um, uh, the answer is a mixture, yes and no. It depends where you are. Uh, the, I mean, traditionally, most of the lifeboat crew were, in the early years, were fishermen. Um, you know, but they, that's how it evolved, uh, mer merchant seamen or fishermen. Of course, today the fishing industry is, is depleted. Uh, merchant fleet... Um, you know, they go away for months on end on, on the big ships. They're, they're not sort of localised as they used to be. So um, we've, we've not had any problems here recruiting either crew, you know, boat crew or shore crew. Uh, there have been one or two instances in, in other parts of the country where it has been more difficult too. And of course, you know, if, if you're recruiting fishermen, they already know a lot about the sea. Uh, their seamanship is good from the start. When you're in, you know, recruiting folks that uh, have no knowledge of the sea, and we've, we've got a few here, then there's a lot of training that has to go on to get them up to speed uh, to be you know, safe out at sea. Okay, so it is a, it's a mixed answer, I'm afraid, yeah. yeah. About the tape. Sorry. Sorry. About the the training, do you train them or how do they get trained? Right, yes, tra training's done in, in kind of two stages. Uh, most of it is done here, okay, because there's nothing that beats actual training out there. Mm. Uh, we train every Tuesday night. Um, this evening there'll be an exercise and, and the boats will go out uh, and
and uh, you know run through various uh, either navigation or seamanship or boat handling uh, uh, training. Um, the college in Paul is good. Uh, they do uh, a lot of training down there, a lot of theory, but also they do. Um, they've got a, a a big like a swimming pool, a big tank, uh, fully enclosed, uh, where they can create waves of up to about three meters. Uh, they do a lot of uh, survival training, um, you know, helicopter crashes, uh, boats and life rafts, getting into life rafts and things like that. They can re uh, create thunderstorms, torrential rain in, and, and complete darkness, so it's very realistic training. Uh, and they do, say they do a lot of theory training, but most of the boat training is done here uh, under the guidance of our coxswain and mechanics who are very experienced uh, guys. Okay. Sorry, was there? No, it's all right. Sure? Yes. Okay. Do you, right, a question for you then. Do you have anything similar in Finland to our RNLI? Well, we barely have any tides of tourism. Mm -hmm. And uh, no estuaries either, so this sort of thing is not really. We have have the problem we have. Okay, so I thought you, you, you've got a long coastline and the, and the Baltic, is it? We have, we have thousands of lakes. Yes. So where people unfortunately drown. Yes. Quite a few people drown every, particularly around midsummer. Right. There's a few parks, we have some carpets. Yeah, but that's <laughs> different. That's not like a, a ship well, at sea. No, that's but not we like but being connected with water. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the. Yeah, we, we get um, a lot of small boats in trouble, um, you know, pleasure boats, uh, like you were saying, holiday, you know, when they're on holiday, um, uh, because of our beaches, and, and uh, okay, you might not have the tides, but I would imagine, I don't know, but I'd imagine your water is rather cold as well, isn't it, in the summer? Well, winter freezes. Well, winter freezes, yeah, but I mean, in the, in the, in the summer. Um, all oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I think it's the Coast Guard. Yes. 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 So it's government yes. uh, paid. Yes. Or it's not yes. uh, volunteering. They're, they're paid yeah. by Coast the sort of government agency. The boats they can use. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But they are also these voluntary organisations. Yeah. 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 They also police you at sea. They check you whether you're drunk or not. Oh, know. do they? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 that would cause chaos here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we have no... Uh, you, you, really? In this country, you could you could buy a boat without yeah. any knowledge, any experience, oh. any insurance. Um, and go out to sea, and there is no legal requirement. There's there's a lot of voluntary schemes. Um, I, uh, some I've been sailing since I was uh, eight years old, and uh, uh, I, I've I've got a, what they call a, a, the Royal Yachting Association, a, 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 a sort of governing body of sailing in this country. Um, they have a, a scheme, um, a series of qualifications. Uh, which I did mine many years ago, but uh, it's a grand title of a yacht master. But it means basically you're competent to go to sea. Um, but uh, yeah, seriously, you, you could buy a, a speedboat, do 50, 60 miles an hour, and not have any knowledge at all about what you're doing. So I'm, I'm delighted you, you've got that bit of regulation. That's good. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to have any sort of training to take you don't? Not legally. No. Not legally. No. We try, um, the RNLI, the, the Royal Yachting Association, try very hard uh, to do it on a voluntary basis, you know, there, there's a lot of advice around. Um, I'll give you a very sad example. Uh, on Good Friday uh, this year, um, it was a beautiful day, uh, lovely sunny day, very little wind, and uh, we had two young guys, uh, they left... Uh, got them in their boat, um, first time they'd been out in it, they came down the river, they anchored just inside where you can see that white water, and uh, there were two, two guys, two large dogs, uh, they anchored the boat wrongly, um, you, you only anchor a boat with the, it's the front end, the, the bow, the, the pointy bit, into the tide, and uh, they anchored it from the back end, the blunt end, and uh, it turned over, and one of them drowned, and, and we were out there within, what, couple of minutes to uh, to help them 
but one guy actually drowned. Mm -hmm. So, and in, in fact, two, just before Christmas, um, sorry, just after Christmas, New Year's Eve, uh, we had a similar tragedy over on one of the surfing beaches just outside uh, the bar when a young lady um, went in the water and uh, sadly um, she, she too drowned. Um, her body disappeared and uh, was pushed back onto the beach about an hour later. Uh, very big swell run that day, but um, yeah, so that the, you know, we still, that's two, two tragedies in what, six months we've had. Uh, here, so they, they still happen despite all the advice and despite having, um, you know, the lifeboats here ready to go out to them. Um, excuse me, aren't you? You want to join in too? Just to say something. Yeah. Can people usually swim in Britain? Generally, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think the, the majority would be able to, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're certainly encouraged to as, as youngsters and uh, school training and so on and so forth. Yeah. They had um, th these two guys out here had both had life jackets, but they didn't wear them. Oh, uh, they were in the bottom of the boat. That is something yes. that always comes around to check. Really? Yes. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's yeah. Possible. If you have a bigger boat. Yes. Or yeah. a rowing boat. I think it's not actually. You don't have to wear a life jacket on a rowing boat. You have to have it put here. Yeah. We have a, a, a little poster, I, I don't know where they are in here, but, then, but it, um, it actually describes the role of a life jacket, and it's just a little poster, it says, I am a life jacket, <laughs> and it says, uh, you know, I will save your life, but I ask one thing of you, put me on, <laughs> All right? because it's no good in the boat, uh, you've, got to, you've got to be wearing it. Okay.